baby. Holy shit, what happened with this guitar pick? Okay, this is one of these red guitar picks. They're very dangerous to throw. There. What? Okay, let's do it again. What's up, everyone? And welcome to Sunday with Ola 104. Welcome to this little Sunday show that I have. And I've been running this for almost two years now. Or over two years. And I know now since I started the Sunday with Ola, actually before I was doing the FAQs on Sunday, but I've noticed a lot of people are actually watching this every Sunday morning and it's become sort of a, like, a, like a thing for a lot of people. But I just wanted to say it's not only a thing for you guys, it's also a thing for me. It's the one time in the week where I have to deliver something like really deliver all the other videos that I do, you know, of, of gear and stuff like that. You know, that can wait. I can always like, oh, you know, I feel a little shitty today. Maybe I'll come and do it tomorrow or, you know, maybe next week or the next two weeks. I don't know. For other videos like that, I feel like, you know, inspiration will decide when to make those videos. But these Sunday with Olas, they, they challenge me to do something every week and I need that. I need that. Just as much as you guys that are sitting here wanting this every week. I need this too. This is good for me too. I promise. Sunday with Ola. Hello. You would think that Ola England the professional would sit and just get extra cameras for different angles. And you know, I do have a bunch of cameras. I have five cameras going on right now, which is, you know, it's insane. You know, instead of just getting even more angles, I have one angle for when I'm recording the guitar and then, you know, it's for Ola talking. So I'm setting all this up right now, but I have to remember, remember to focus. Look at that. Hello. Cover the, cover the crotch, cover the crotch, very important, otherwise the, the, uh, some of the females might go bananas. They're not. Look at that. I'm not gonna go focus that. Hope the focus on that camera is okay, I'm not going there. Hello. I really hope so. Fuck, no, I'm gonna go check out <laughs> shit. <laughs> Alright, I hope you guys are focused for today, uh, just as these five cameras that I have throughout the room that are absolutely not necessary. I can do this with just one camera, but you know, it's cool to change angles here and there and it makes the editing a little bit rougher, you know? And uh, you know, you get more action basically. And now I've been talking a lot. Let's head into the news. We're starting out with Jim Root. Jim Root has mixed feelings about their new album that was released this past Friday. I haven't listened to it yet. I will. Calm down. The singles are good though. Jim is saying, I feel like we're, we're not able to use Joe Baresi to his fullest extent. So Slipknot hired Joe Baresi, who's done work with Tool and Queens of the Stone Age for this new album of theirs, uh, The End So Far. Jim Root explained that because of COVID, basically uh, the, the pattern for writing and releasing an album or recording album wasn't the same, obviously, you know, because people couldn't physically meet. And he's saying, with my mindset being the way it is, I didn't have a ton of creative input on this album. I felt kind of rushed trying to come up with ideas for this or that arrangement. We weren't rehearsed as a band. We did not come in knowing the songs top to bottom and that affected the record. That put us behind schedule. It had us not really arguing and fighting with each other, but trying to figure out like, what's the best way to approach this, knowing what we are doing, what we are doing. You can make a plan and you can plan as much as you want, but the big clock above your head and the budget from Laban and all this stuff, the studio we were at and the end of scheduling of that, there are so many facts that were against us making this record that I'm surprised we were able to finish it. So basically what Jim Root is saying is that in a pressured situation like you know, it has been for the past years with uh, the pandemic and all. It shows more the, the negative aspects of being a part of a big record label. And you know, you guys know I'm a big advocate for uh, ditching <laughs> record labels. They're just a stupid middle hand. We, they are needed in some aspects, but in my opinion, you can just get the, the parts that you really need and you don't want to do yourself. I'm more for supporting uh, a modular aspect of what a label actually does. Like if you need like uh, the, uh, the marketing aspect, you can get, uh, you know, the marketing team. Or if you have, uh, you know, you need help with booking, you can get the booking team. If you need help with the publishing, you have that and so on. So, so people can pick and decide. Jim is just basically reflecting on this and uh, having this big clock 
over his head being you know the label with uh, a tight deadline and basically because of this deadline they couldn't record or deliver this album like he would want it to be delivered. I think this is really interesting because Jim Root is a part of a very big band called Slipknot. Sometimes it just doesn't work in the way that you want. You know, the artists should be able to have all the time in the world to create their craft. But at this point right here, you know, they got stuck with the label a little bit. So that sucks ass. Did it really affect the album? What are the fans going to think about the album? That we have to see for another time and talk about maybe, I don't know, maybe on the next Sunday with Ola, I have listened to the album, maybe I can reflect on this as well. Will I be able to hear that it was rushed or not? I have no idea. Thank you. Oh shit, thank god, guitar news. Yes, holy shit, I've been longing for this. Jackson unveils four head spinning master built electric guitars for 2022. Okay, let's check it out. Basically, master built guitars made by their master builders at Fender. Jackson has continued its fine 2022 form by announcing a raft of new one of a kind custom shop master built electric guitars. Okay, what do we have? Jackson custom shop dinky custom space tiger. I like that name. Space tiger. Holy shit. You know, what are two really cool things? Space tigers. <laughs> it's a great mixture. Space Tiger. Yeah, just don't pay attention to the price. That doesn't matter. We're here to just look at these guitars, okay? The price doesn't matter. It's just for show. Look at this. Built by Jackson Master Builder Red, David Nichols, the one of a kind dinky custom Space Tiger combines visually, visually, vicious, visual, vicious, vicious with cat like mobility. Why is, it, why is that so hard to read? Viciously, vicious, 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 like cat. With a Bengal Tiger Nebula inspired artwork by visual uh, Dan Lawrence covering an older body paired with a caramelized flame maple neck with black shark fin inlays. That is cool as fuck. I would love to have that. Just not for six fosses, 699 bucks. What else? Jackson Custom Shop Black Karina Warrior Natural Oil. Okay, so cool, man. You have two worlds colliding. You had the natural world colliding with, you know, sharpness and extremity. -dee -dee -dee. <laughs> extremity, extremity, dee -dee. what, dude? I'm really struggling with the English today. Uh, it has to be more at English, I guess. Extremity, dee -dee 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 -dee. Like, the extremity, like it's an extreme shape coupled with natural woods. Okay, very not that common that you see this. Uh, pretty cool. Jackson Custom Shop Double Roads Black Ice Crackle. Touted as one of the more extreme looking Vs in the Jackson Fold, the custom shop Double Rose built by Jackson's Mel Joe Williams is inspired aesthetically by Black Dahlia Murder guitarist Brandon Ellis Custom Kelly, which Williams also worked on. That's a long sentence. In addition to its head turning black crackle finish and the ice blue metallic paint job, the guitar features 25 scale length, reverse headstock, reverse shark fin lights, and the classic tonomatic style bridge. <sighs> okay, cool. Okay, and then there's a red uh, V as well. Okay, cool. This space tiger. Holy shit. I want a space tiger. Oh shit, I forgot you can do this. You can you can do this. Uh, look at this. That's really cool. You have space mixed with the tiger. Why didn't I think of that? That's fucking brilliant. There's a new not stolen Adam Jones Gibson guitar. <laughs> you know the other Adam Jones guitars that was stolen? They like stole a full container of uh, Adam Jones guitars. This has not been stolen yet, okay? Adam Jones Custom Reverse Silver Burns Gibson Flying V was designed with help from Kirk Hammett, Richie Faulkner and Jim Root. Okay, back to Jim Root. Adam Jones TV. What's this? Is that Bruce Lee? <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> my dream guitar made true by my good friend Gay Ken. Uh, thank you, amigo. A very rewarding collaboration with Matt Curler and Gibson Custom. I always loved the 1958 Futura headstock and asked if Gibson team would be willing to pull it out of retirement. I played this epic instrument on stage during the last 2022 Tool Music Tour and it sounds and performs killer. Only three prototypes in existence. Okay, I own one and three and Gay Ken owns number two. Can't put it down. Okay, cool. <laughs> Will we be able to see this in a production line from Gibson Guitars? I mean, it is kind of cool. You have this... Can I? Pause. No, I have to watch it all again. Okay, so you have this black guitar. 
you have this kind of like a sperm burst or sperm colored burst, which is kind of cool. Headstock looks like a Dean headstock. Did Dean also steal that? I don't know. Um, can I please just... Can I pause the video? So, you have this headstock, which is very Dean-esque, right? And then uh, you have the... Okay. Look at that placement of the pickup switch right there. Ha! You have to do it with your elbow. It's like... Nah, 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 if you need to change the pickup. Sure, it looks cool. It looks cool. Will this become a production model? Will there be a stolen container of these guitars? We just have to see. Tommy Lee once again relists Calabasas home. Okay, it seems that Tommy Lee of uh, Motley Crue has been trying to sell his f***ing house for like eight years. Uh, six years, I'm sorry. Uh, starting at uh, almost six million dollars. And then when it did get sold, they bumped it down four hundred thousand dollars and then uh, even lower. And then uh, dropped in May 2017 to $5 million. So it, 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 it seems like he's not getting it sold, basically. The last price in May 2020 was $4.5 million. So he's not getting this uh, house sold for some reason. Can we check this? I want to see where uh, Tom Lee lives. I imagine Tom Lee being a pretty disgusting person. You know, he, he's swinging his dick all, all over the place and... You know, the problem with seeing this house like this is that, you know, he's probably been f***ing everywhere in this house, you know? And could you live with having... I mean, th obviously, this goes with any house that you buy. There probably has been someone fucking it somewhere in the house. But look, he's probably been f***ing in this room, on that couch, in that lamp. He's probably been f***ing in there. That shower and bathtub has definitely been f***ed by him. And that bidet, definitely he got some f***ing, f***ing in there. <laughs> I was about to say that if that fish, but I, I really hope it didn't. Okay, studio. This is cool. Look at that. That's is that a full fucking Neve set right there? Oh, that's fucking awesome. Dude, that's a studio in there. If I would buy this house, I would have like an insane deep clean of this house. Just washing all the walls, all the floors, all the everything. Maybe I'll just burn the house down just to be safe and then build another house. You know, that may be a dream come true right there. Burn down the house and then build it up again. So there you go, you can buy Tom Lee's house for as little as five million dollars. Perfect. All right, if you didn't see, in the past week I uploaded a coffee with Rob Flynn, a machine, and holy shit. What a hero that guy is. And he told me a dime bag story during that coffee with a lot. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it up here. You can, okay. It, Rob Flynn is an excellent storyteller. I was just really impressed of how he kept a red line going through the entire interview. He was, oh my, one of my favorite interviews I've ever made with anyone was with Rob Flynn. Such a hero. And anyways, he talked about this dime bag story where he got a dime bag guitar. Eventually, someone broke into Rob Flynn's house and stole this dime bag guitar. A dime bag guitar gifted to him from dime bag. If you want to hear the story, go check that coffee with Ola. But it was returned one day back in 2016. I've seen this video before. I just wanted to show it again because it's a cool video. Apparently, this lady was buying storage lockers and she bought a storage locker for 10 bucks and she found this guitar in this storage locker and sent an email to Rob Flynn basically uh, giving him his guitar back. And this video is so wholesome, it's up online, you can watch it yourself. Uh, basically where she drives to meet Rob and Rob gets to pick up the guitar. It's such a great video and uh, it makes me really happy. It just sucks when people steal guitars, man, just saying f And that, my friends, was the news. Thank you. Who's up there? You won't escape that way! Adventures with Ola. Look at this cinematic view. Holy shit. I'm on my way to go watch Machine Head, Amon Marth, and Halo Effect. Yay! I haven't been to a show in a very, very long time. Uh, except for, you know, the haunted shows that I've been playing. Rob of Machine Head was visiting the office uh, earlier today and he uh, recorded a coffee with Ola with me. So, very, very happy about that. And now I'm heading into Stockholm City to go watch this show. F yeah, let's go. Is that my bus?
classic mistake. I went to the wrong uh, subway station. <laughs> so now I have to walk really far, but it's okay. I played fucking Davidian with Machine Head live in Stockholm. Holy shit, was that amazing. Uh, when I had uh, Rob over for coffee uh, this past week, uh, I told him obviously about, you know, how I covered Davidian back in the day when I was in, when my first band did covers, uh, d like in the 90s. And on the way back when I drove into the venue, he was like, you should play Davidian with us tonight, man. And I was like, uh, okay. And he hooked me up. I was sitting there. We didn't discuss or anything. I just jumped on stage during the live show. I got a you know in ear pack, and that was it. And he gave me his guitar, and uh, that was it. I played a song, basically. And I'm so honored by this. And you know, sharing stage with the other guys in Machina too. You know, Vogue and uh, holy shit, man, an experience I will cherish for a very, very long time. It made me incredibly happy and incredibly proud, you know, to be able to go out there and play. Uh, you know, Machina meant a lot to me back in the day. It still means a lot to me, obviously. Tell Ola 
when I was 15, 16 years old, playing Davidian with my band, you know, covers, that I would be able to play it with Machine Head when I get older. Holy shit, man. Uh, incredible honor. And all the, you know, the team behind Machine Head, all the crew and all that that helped me out. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Next time, maybe I'll learn the solo too. Okay? <laughs> shit. Thank you. All right. Time to buy a guitar. I did this uh, previously on Swole Last before summer, but then, you know, I just derailed. I haven't been able to deal with it in a long time. We're back at it again, but I'm going to change some things here. I will put up a couple of options of signature guitars here from this website that you will be able to vote for in the premiere of this Sunday with Ola. So in the premiere right now, there are going to be options for you. Okay, I'm going to put up the options that I'm suggesting right here and you get to vote in the premiere which guitar I should buy. And after I bought it, I will make a test. <laughs> Done deal, okay? The previous times I did this, I was basically going through the website and be like, mm, oh, should I do this and this and this? But this time I'm going to be a little bit more quick about it. All right, so I picked four guitars. You get to vote which guitar I should buy and I'll do a test demo of this in a coming video. The options are the PRS SE Tremonti Custom CA, the Epiphone Brendan Small Ghost Horse Explorer, the ESP LTD Max 200, uh, Max Cavalera or the Jackson Demolition Fury PD, which is the Phil Demo signature guitar. You vote for this right now. I'll end the voting for this at the end of the swallow line. We'll see which guitar won. Okay? Awesome. Thank you. All right. Question of the day. I've changed this segment into uh, having video questions from my members. So members can ask me questions in uh, my Discord channel and I will answer them in the Sunday with Ola. The question of the day is from Sol or Nicholas. Let's go. Hey Ola. Uh, so, you can only have one high gain amplifier for the rest of your life. What is it? Modelers aren't an option. Buy me. Thank you, Nicholas, for that question. I have to pick one amplifier to live with for the rest of my life. No modelers, uh, which is smart because modelers, you can bring basically any amplifier. Uh, and as I'm watching, can you guys see I'm, I'm, I'm currently eyeballing this uh, row of amplifiers just, you know, because that, that, that's the first thing that would like was ca catching my eye. The Engel Savage, for instance, that's a Savage uh, 60 over there. But the Engel Savage was my main amplifier when I was playing with uh, with uh, Feared and Subside back in the day. I had that amplifier and used it live for seven years, I think. Uh, I love the Engel Savage. It's an amazing amplifier. Then obviously I had the Randall Satan, which is, you know, a completely other type of Mel Beast. But, uh, you know, I have the John Petrucci f***ing mace over there. It's f***ing brilliant. JCM 800, maybe not so much. It's an incredible amplifier, but maybe not for the rest of my life. The Badlander, f*** man. That's such a good amplifier. If Sol Nicholas is letting me bring an overdrive to this, I think I have to pick a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. That is, to date, still my favorite amplifier. I mean, favorite sounding amplifier? Maybe not, you know, that always shifts and, and, you know, but I know for a fact that I can always go back to a rectifier and I will know the sound and I connect an overdrive and, you know, any type of overdrive, it, it just, it's such a good amplifier for overdrives. I think it is because I know it so well. I know the rectifier so well and I just, I just love the tone of it. So I have to pick the dual rectifier as the one amplifier I get to keep for the rest of my life, okay? Does that make sense? Uh, I haven't played a rectifier in a good while, actually. Maybe it's time to make a new video of one. Thank you. And that, my friends, is it for Sunday with Ola. Don't forget about the Sunday with Ola Rift Challenge. I haven't really been explaining how this works in a long time, so here it goes. Uh, in every Sunday with Ola, you know, there's an intro song. I play an intro song. You can download those drums from that song in the description of this video. If you make your own riffs, you record yourself, you tag it with Swola. So for this instance and this video, it'll be hashtag Swola104. Okay? You upload it to YouTube and maybe I'll feature you in the live stream on my second channel that happens on Monday. So tomorrow there will be a live stream of me checking out Sun with Ola 103 contributions. Okay? So be sure to take a part of that. And it's awesome to see what you guys are coming up with because you guys are fucking amazing. 
I just wanted to say that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget about the voting and the premiere chat. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're watching this after the premiere, you won't be able to vote. Also, we have a new f***ing t-shirt design. You guys were asking for it. You know, I'm doing all these pick throws every Sunday with Ola. Look, look at me throwing my guitar picks all over the place. You know, that's how it works every Sunday. Guitar Pick Ninja, let's go. It's available right now through the oldanglandshop.com website. Thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for tuning in today. Hope you have an excellent Sunday. Goodbye.